What's going on internet? IG here again today. We're going to be starting a series on cloud computing and the operating systems that support said cloud computing. Now, I know most people uh, and most operating systems do have some level of cloud integration with them. And the more recent operating systems become, the more integrated with the cloud they also are. But in this series, I'm going to be having a look at three different operating systems that are geared specifically towards the cloud. First up, Peppermint OS. <laughs> Now, Peppermint OS is probably the most desktop-oriented cloud computing uh, system. Now, what, what do I mean by that? Essentially, it, it, it is the most functional without an internet connection. The idea of, obviously, a cloud OS is that you do most of your stuff on the internet. We've basically seen the rise of this operating system through the Google Chromebook. Uh, but there are quite a number of options out there, some of which predate the Google's Chrome OS. And Peppermint is a good example. So out of all of the cloud operating systems, Peppermint 3 is probably going to give you the most clean user experience straight off the bat. You've just got a simple task panel with notification icons in the bottom right and bottom left, we have a very nice Windows 2000-esque menu. Very good for anybody who's used a computer for more than 10 years or so. It is very user friendly, meaning that you could throw it on an old laptop that was previously running XP or something like that, and it would function very, very well. This is running under a virtual machine. The reason I did that is because I wanted to emulate lower spec hardware. So I've given it only two cores and one gigabyte of RAM. And believe you me, it is running flawlessly. Now, as you can see, just as I'm poking through the default applications that are installed here, you only get a few basic uh, locally installed applications like a media player, which is no mem player and the Guayadec music player. I'm not sure how you say that, but that's my best effort. You also get a document viewer, BitTorrent client, Chromium web browser, Dropbox, simple scan, and a handful of accessories. Of course, you get a software manager, which funnily enough is the Linux Mint software manager, which is a bit of an interesting choice considering there is the light uh, LXDE software center out there now, because uh, the software manager on the Linux Mint side of things is a little bit bulky and I'm not a big fan of the interface. Ultimately, you're not here for the pre-installed local apps, you're here for the cloud integration. And I might remark that it does pretty well. As I said, Chromium is your default web browser, which is good choice. And basically their, their number one tool here that makes it an integrated system is ICE. Now its terminology isn't fantastic, but you simply enter the URL that you want, you enter the name of the application, you select where you wanna put it in the menu, and you can either select your own icon or download the icon from the site, and then it will simply add that website or web app into your menu here. As examples, you can already see you've got, you've got links to the Pixlr website for editing any of your photos, You've got links to Gmail, Google Calendar, and Google Reader, soon to be obsolete, in the Office section. And you could probably add music services like Spotify or Jamendo or any of those uh, under sound and video if you so wish. One other nice little tweak here is that they do include the Office client uh, for Google Drive, which is GW Office. And obviously if I connect my Google account, it gives you some offline functionality there as well as uh, obviously connecting with Google Drive so you can edit and collaborate with your documents on the go. The only thing that's really missing from this operating system, given the fact that it is so fast, is a keyboard launcher. Because having to come down and use the mouse to open up a menu, it does take a bit of time. You can see here that I'm not running anything at the moment and out of the two cores, it's cycling between two and 10%. I'm using 115 megs of my one gig of RAM. So it's very, very light, perfect for old computers. And of course you have full access to your file system just as you would any regular Linux desktop. The thing that I like most about Peppermint OS as a cloud operating system is that it makes it easy for you to build on the services that you need. It doesn't give you a whole bunch of stuff you don't need out of the box. And it also is obviously very quick, runs on old computers, and you have full control over your system as far as the file system and also what software, local software you want to install. Because after all, it is just Ubuntu with an LXDE interface and a lot of the guts stripped out so it's a lot faster. If you're looking for a cloud operating system that makes it easy to integrate the cloud and web services that you want, and you do want full control over your operating system, both the software and the file system, then Peppermint 3 is the one to look at. So what do you guys think of the whole cloud computing thing? For me, I actually like the idea of having a set portable machine, which I can have a very fast, lightweight distribution that is easily connected with all the cloud services in one very speedy and productive package. Obviously in the rest of this series, I'm gonna be having a look at specifically two other operating systems, both Chromium OS and Jolly Cloud. But let me know in the comments below what you would want to see in a cloud operating system. For me, I definitely wanna see offline functionality, and I find that in Peppermint OS. 
And after all, it is the most Linuxy of all of those cloud operating systems. So it's also a good option if you have previous experience in the Linux ecosystem. Definitely hit that like button and subscribe if you want to see this content on a regular basis. Thank you all for your support. I shall see you in the very next video. Peace out, ladies and gentlemen.